Hello everyone, welcome to the next session on Answers to Augment Tutorials. In this session, we are going to analyze the tibia bone for the static structure analysis. What we are doing here is assuming that the tibia bone is subjected to a static load and we will be observing the effect of this load on the tibia bone. We will see what would be the effect in terms of deformation stress and strain over the body. So we will start by double clicking on static structural. We will first go to engineering data. Tibia bone will have specific properties which will not be a part of the material of ANSYS. So I am creating a new material. So as per these properties we will give the values for density we will convert this to gram per centimeter cube and this is 2000 next we will enter the values of isotropic elasticity you can see here the value of Young's modulus is 2.13 gigapascal so this is 2.13 e9 and the value of poison's ratio is 0.3 I am using the same properties of the bone for analysis of various types. For example, I am using it for structural and modal analysis of the tibia bone. I also use the same properties of the material for the femur bone because I am considering a particular person's bone and giving you the data. This value will vary from person to person because everyone has a different bone density. They will have accordingly different elasticity and they will also have a different poisons ratio. You have to update the data from a particular person and then go ahead with the analysis. So we will continue with these data. I will go to project and update project. Next I will go to geometry and right click. I will import the step file which I already have with me. Then I will go to model and double click on it. We will first go to geometry and allocate the material that we have created. Next, I will go to mesh and I will change the sizing to fine. In case you don't have a very good processor, you can leave it to coarse mesh itself. You don't have to change it to fine. Or you don't have to increase the element size if your processor is not very good. What you can do is you can assume the default value of element size and analyze. Now what happens is when you go for better meshing, your solution converges towards the exact solution. For example, by exact solution, I could have got the stress generated over this body as say 5 megapascal. If I have a fine mesh, I will get the value as 4.7, 4.8, 4.9 megapascal. But suppose if I do not have a fine meshing, or I do not have a good element size and it is just a default value. So what would happen is I could get a result of 4.1, 4.2 which is little away from the exact value but yes you somewhat come to the value. It's not like you are very much away from the exact solution. It would not be something like you get a 2.5 or a 3 value. It would definitely come up to something which is in the range. But as and when you improve your meshing you will get a solution which is moving more towards the exact solution. This is called as convergence in FE. When you converge towards the exact solution. So now I will go to mesh and update. This is how the bone appears in the human body. So we are going to apply fixed at this end. I'll go to static structural and right click and insert fixed support and I'll select this end. So 
select apply on the top edge i am going to apply right click and insert pressure this direction is z i'll change define by from normal to to component and along the z axis say i apply a pressure of i'll just change the units i'll change it to pascal it is minus 850 pascal now if you want you can change the units to millimeter if you don't want to enter the data in megapascal you can just change it to pascal by using this method then i'll go to solution and insert deformation total i'll insert deformation directional i will also insert the strain and the stress which will be generated over this tibia bone next i'll go to solution and solve we'll check the first result of total deformation you can see that the value is 0.0312 mm let's animate and check the result this is a fixed end and this is where we have applied the pressure so here the maximum value of deformation has been obtained if you want to see the maximum min value click here you will find the max and the minimum value if you want to find the value at a particular position you can just click on probe come here and click wherever you want to see the value now suppose if i don't want these results i can just delete all and click on pro once again so that the option is unselected if you don't want to see these elements you can come to this option here and click on no wireframe such that the elements disappear you can also change this contour this is contour band selected right now such that you are seeing bands of data which will define and demarcate your value ranges so i'll just click on smooth contour such that the contour bands have now mixed into each other and these bands are not clearly visible so this is also something which can be done next we'll go to directional deformation you can see here the value is 1.79 it tends to minus 6 mm which is the highest value over here this is the directional deformation now this is of this sort because i want to see along the z axis i'll change it here once again i'll just solve once again now let's see the deformation okay so now we got the right value at this end the deformation is maximum along the z axis it is 0.00277 mm you can again animate and see the result next is the elastic strain the value is maximum in this zone you can see it is 1.3757 it tends to minus 5 mm and it is minimum in these edges animate and see how it appears to be last is the equivalent stress the value is 0.029 megapascal this is the highest value in this zone and the lower value is obtained in the two ends you can just animate and see now suppose if i don't want to see the smooth contours i can just click on contour bands once again such that the results are visible in the band form also if i want to see the elements i can just come here and click show elements such that the elements appear once again now this is all about the static analysis you need to understand that in real life situation it will not be a static analysis it will be a dynamic analysis because the amount of force or pressure which is applied over the bone is going to vary when a person is sitting standing walking running or whatever he is performing any physical activity that he is performing will lead to a dynamic state of force over the body
so this is just assuming a particular amount of pressure which is exerted on this bowl and we have done an analysis so with this i end the session i hope you have understood the analysis if you have any doubts please write to me in the comment section don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon for latest video updates see you in the next session thank you